One week ago today, an alert about two missing teens turned into a gruesome crime scene investigation. Six people killed at a Henrietta home, including those two teenagers who were there for a sleepover. The crime scene tape came down at the home 24 hours later. It was turned back over to the property owner, only to be turned back into a crime scene over the weekend, with state agents now heading up the investigation. News Force Kaylee Olivas is following every twist and turn in this case, and she is back in Henrietta this evening. New in this case, the Oklahoma State Medical Examiner's Office, along with the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation, was here at this Henrietta property Monday morning. OSBI did take over this case over the weekend and has been collecting evidence since at least Saturday. One of the victim's families we spoke with says it took far too long for a state agency to get involved, though, that this should have happened the day their daughter died. I'm upset, healing, trying to heal. Still confused, still a lot of answers that need to be given. Not only is this investigation mind boggling to these families, but McFadden being released early on a first degree rape and grand larceny sentence is where more confusion lies. Both charges resulted in a total of 28 years, but they ran concurrently, meaning both sentences were being served at the same time. They should not be allowed back out in the world. There is no rehabilitation for sexual offenders. There's not. McFadden's court records show he pled guilty to first degree rape by force and fear of a 16 year old in 2003. That carries up to life imprisonment, but a Pittsburgh County judge only sentenced him to 20 years. He was released early in 2020 after completing 85% of his sentence. Two and a half years later, he killed five kids, his wife of less than a year, and then turned the gun on himself. If they have the audacity to ruin a child's life forever, doing the things they do, then we shouldn't be able to lock them up for life, for ruining that child's life. So he drafted up this petition demanding change in the current law when it comes to a convicted sex offender sentencing and probationary requirements. He's also demanding more funding for law enforcement so they'll have the resources to put a stop to people like Jesse McFadden. He also believes more funding would have allowed for local law enforcement to investigate his daughter's murder more thoroughly. It's called the Knight's Law in honor of the five kids who lost their lives in Henrietta. We have sexual predators still here in Henrietta that are walking around being able to do whatever they want. They're going to school events just as Jesse McFadden did. We ask that everybody sign the petition and we ask that everybody in every other state do the same thing. It's time. With the clock running out on this year's legislative session, News 4 emailed Henrietta's state leaders about the petition. So far, we've only heard back from Representative Scott Fedgetter. In a statement, his office says, quote, he's planning to file last minute legislation to better protect the public from convicted sexual perpetrators. Until then, Webster's fight for a safer tomorrow is far from over. I will fight for her. And I ask that everybody fight for all the victims and let's make change. In Henrietta, Kaylee Olivas, Oklahoma's News 4. All right, Kaylee, thank you. Our team is currently reviewing court documents from that case. Now we have more information on how you can help the families at KFOR.com.